So this is class 107 of the Golden Doves. We're on page 60. Um, and we were talking about how uh, the medieval man um, uh, took text very seriously and developed their ideas around text, which of course was the influence of the Bible and Jewish thinking on um, uh, Gentile epistemology. So because a medieval man considered interpretation the highest form of intellectual activity and viewed the whole gamut of reality as a semiological system, as noted before, that there was a text, actual texts, um, uh, be it the, the writings of the Greek philosophers, be it um, um, whatever religious text they have, but also they viewed the world as a text, as a semiological system. It is difficult to exaggerate his deep involvement with semiology and semantic theory, right? I must confess, wrote Roman Jacobson, referring to medieval linguists, that the more one is plunged into their writings, the stronger is the impression of an unsurpassed skill in the arduous tasks of semantic theory. So that's what Roman Jacobson is, says regarding um, um, the medieval man, which shows that there's been a, a devolution, I guess, um, um, in so much as today people don't really know how to read or don't read carefully or don't care about what texts have to say. Everything is kind of like this fuzzy natural morality and whatever the natural morality is at the time, because it's constantly changing. And that quote was from Glosses on the Medieval Insight into Science of Language, into the Science of Language by, uh, again, by Roman Jacobson. Um, continuing in the main text, the proceeding applies all the more to the Jewish thinker. Well, of course, because it came from us. Um, Jewish involvement with the book dates from remote antiquity, right? With the loss of national identity and political autonomy, the Jewish people became more and more dependent on the book. So when we were kicked out of the land of Israel and we no longer had a government, so the closeness between Am Yisrael and the book um, became even more pronounced because what is our identity without a government, without political institutions? Our identity became um, defined only and solely by the book. Survival was an act of interpretation, right? So we needed to be able to interpret the Humash, the Ketub, the Nebim, the Ketubim, in order to survive, because only by making those texts relevant through interpretation, relevant to a contemporary situation, would we continue that connection with the Torah Shabbat Kham. As the bureaucracies indispensable for the government of the people were coming to an end, the Jews had to fill the vacuum with their books, which are books about the book. So the Jewish people were prolific writers. We wrote many, 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 many pirushim and many, many, many texts because every text is actually an explanation of the book. So all the books, we wrote books about the book. The entire basis of the rabbinic movement and the subsequent survival of Judaism, as we know, it rests on interpretation, right? So the whole basis of the Ahachmeha Gemara, for example, is their authority to um, develop their legal ideas, Jewish jurisprudence, through extending the Pesukim of the Torah and interpreting the Pesukim of the Torah. So they would use Derasha to extend the Pesukim of the Torah to fit whatever rules um, uh, they wanted. That's what Derasha is, right? They have the Peshat, but then you have the Derasha. Without interpretation, the entire edifice of Judaism would have vanished into naught, right? So if they didn't know how to make this connection, it would have been, there would have been, chas um, v'shalom, uh, no, am Yisrael, hermeneutics is key. The political, juridical, and religious institutions, right? The justification for their own peculiar history and destiny. The hopes of the future, the system of values, etc., are the effect of interpretation. Right. So I'm going to read that again. We said, without interpretation, the entire edifice of Judaism would have vanished into naught. The political, like the king, right, the monarchy. Juridical, the Sanhedrin. And religious institutions, the Kehuna. The justification for their own peculiar history and destiny. Right, so we have a, we have a very special history. We have a special direction. There's a vector in that history. The hopes for the future, Yemotam Mashiach. 
the system of values. So we have a special system of values, different than Goyim, are the effective interpretation. Only by connecting it with the book. So the book is the Yesod, and we always look to the book as a source of truth. But in order to use the book as a source of truth for a contemporary situation, given the fact that the government, governmental institutions are gone, you need to have derasha. So through derasha, the hachamim were able to make the book, through interpretation, the hachamim were able to make the book replace the political institutions of the Jewish people. Sigmund Freud sensed the peculiar situation of the Jews when he wrote. And this is a quote from Sigmund Freud's um, Moses and Monotheism. And here's what Sigmund Freud wrote. The political misfortune of the nation taught them to appreciate the only possession they had retained, the written records. All we had from all of our history is the Sefer Torah and its true value. From now, on, from now on, it was the holy book and the study of it that kept the scattered people together. So what unified Am Yisrael is the Sefer Torah Shabbat right? Echad. Every Jewish community had Echad with the Sefer Torah. And that Sefer Torah is what unified us. We all agree this is something we have to stand up for and revere. It is the word of God. Right? So we look to the Sefer Torah for truth. So through interpretation of the Sefer Torah, the truths of the Chachamim, in a sense, become um, eternal, but not really eternal, unlike the word eternal, permanent, a permanent fixture of Judaism. This last statement is accurate only if interpretation is meant by study, right? So Sigmund Freud said, and the study of it, the study of the book, my father corrects, it's the interpretation of the book, because there's no just blind study, right? Continuing now in the text. Uh, and with the, this was all a quote that was brought in the main text. Right? In Muslim lands, particularly in the Iberian Peninsula, such as Andalusia, the Jew responded to the new interest in philology and grammatical theory prompted by Arabic culture and applied it to the language of the script. It's really amazing because the Arabs themselves became very um, focused on philology. They became very focused on grammatical theory. And that was a good thing because that's part of Jewish thinking, is to focus on philology and to focus on grammatical theory. So because the society around us happened to be, right, happened to be, that the society around us was very interested in philology and grammatical theory. So our hachamim were able to develop independent philological and grammatical theories themselves because the environment was conducive to that. Right. And they applied that to the language of the scripture. So we have the Sefer Shorashim of Rabbeinu Yonat bin Jannah, Sefer Arikma of Rabbeinu Yonat bin Jannah, Sefer Shorashim of Radak, Sefer Mikhlol of Radak, and all the other, uh, right? The dawn of what later would be known as the golden age of Judaism began the grammatical works of Menachem ibn Saruk. His disciple, Rabbi Yehuda ibn Hayuj, discovered the most important principle governing Semitic languages. All words derived from a triliteral root. So that's the Hidush of Rabbi Yudai bin Hayuj, that there is a triliteral three letter root for all words. This discovery revolutionized the study of language in general and grammatical theory in particular. So this was a revolutionary idea. So you see how because the Goyim were interested, the intelligent Muslim Goyim in Spain were interested in philology. So this spurred the Jewish people to study their own philology, and we did so quite effectively. And this discovery came about. And it's an incredible discovery that all words derive from a triliteral root. This discovery revolutionized the study of language in general and grammatical theory in particular. Dunash ibn Labrat, a brilliant grammarian, you know the famous song, um, um, about, right, that song? That's uh, do not even love it. However, you sing the song. I don't know how you sing it. The, the different melodies. Um, anyway, do not even love it. A brilliant grammarian who had sat at the feet of Sadagaon in the east. He was a Talmud of Rabbeinu Sadagaon. So that song is it's an intelligent song. Intelligent. Not all Pismonim, like the modern Pismonim, really don't have intelligent. Um, by and large, 
they were their songs are uh, really outstanding so bringing to the west the invaluable knowledge of his teacher so dunashi min labrat who studied with rabenu sadaga on brought the knowledge of rabenu sadaga on to andalusia Right, so bringing to the West the invaluable knowledge of his teacher, the most outstanding man in medieval Jewry prior to Maimonides, before Harambam, the greatest was uh, the Benus Adegaon. Thus was initiated a period of linguistic research unparalleled in Jewish history, culminating in the works of Rabbi Shimuel Hanagid, Rabbi Moshe ibn Chikatila, Rabbi Ula ibn Bal'am, Rabbi Abraham ibn Ezra, and above all, the great master of grammatical theory, Ibn Jannah. It's very interesting how Am Israel in Galut is going to be affected by the society it inhabits, the society that it resides in. It's unavoidable. Um, we see here how Akalish Baruch blessed the Jews in Andalusia by putting them in an intelligent society that was interested in philology and interested in grammar and interested in, in, in literary theory, right? So uh, perhaps lost literary theory. But nevertheless, because of that, the hachamim that we had were spurred to produce their own um, works and own investigations on the matter, and the results were great. That's what made um, the golden age of Spain the golden age of Spain. Right. One of the dangers of America is the intellectual level of this society is going down um, in an incredibly fast manner. The only thing that's faster than the downturn of intelligence in America is the upturn in dogma. So people have become more and more dogmatic and less and less intelligent. That's that, that, that's a danger, of course. That's a danger for Am Yisrael because we live in this society and we, we get affected by it. But getting back to the point about the golden age of Spain, we saw how many great hachamim were produced because they lived in an intelligent society that was interested in text and the meaning of words. And that was some of the greatest um, Torah works of Am Yisrael were produced in uh, Andalusia, Spain.